everybody, I'm The Real Heather Lynn and this is Lounge Chair Reviews. Lounge Chair Reviews is where I review books that I've just finished reading and it's kind of my informal, hopefully spoiler free, unscripted show where I just talk about what I've read or seen or just anything that has caught my interest that's literary or story based. So for Christmas, hence the hat, I decided to do a best and worst books I've read in 2012 list. Um, so I'm starting with the worst books I read in 2012 and also books that were just kind of and whatever and that I just I wasn't impressed with. So they're kind of the honorable bad book mentions. Here's the worst list. Uh, let's get started. Grave Illusions by Lena Gardner. I found this on Kindle, I think. I think I downloaded it because it was free and I decided to read it because I was bored. And I read it at about Thanksgiving time, or no, I'm sorry, during the hurricane because I lost power for nine days in Hurricane Sandy because I live in New Jersey. So I read this book and it's about, it's uh, the first book in a series called Jess Vandermeyer. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And basically, she's a vampire detective in a special branch of kind of the FBI, I guess. I'm not too sure. And so this is like the introductory one. You're actually following the cop she recruits, not really her. Um, but if I remember correctly, it does switch viewpoints occasionally which I have no problem with. It just wasn't a good book. It wasn't interesting enough. The premise was kind of cool but nothing really kind of came of it that made me too impressed. I, I didn't like the world very much. I have no problem with vampire books. You know, grew up huge Anne Rice fan and I don't even have an issue with Twilight having sparkly vampires. I have more issues with the grammar and uh, what it teaches young girls about how relationships should be. So as long as a vampire world is good, I'm totally all for it and I have no issue with it and you'll see that on this list and you'll see that on my best books list as well that I just don't kind of care. Like I'm a huge fantasy person and it kind of doesn't matter what kind and I'm not sick to death of vampires yet. So. It wasn't the vampire aspect, it was, it tried to walk a fine line between cop procedural and romance that it just failed at. Like, I can't even tell you why, it just didn't work for me at all and I just didn't like it. Dead Until Dark by Charlene Harris and it's the first Sookie Stackhouse novel. And I actually read this book years ago, long before True Blood was announced. I was looking for the Anita Blake series and didn't remember the name and I walked into a Borders back when they existed and asked the guy and he thought I was describing this and at the time it was called Southern Vampire Chronicles and I bought the first book and said what the hell and I didn't like it but I tend if there's any interest in the world at all I'll tend to pick up extra books in the series so I read the series massively out of order I think there were seven books out at the time and then I I dropped it. I was like, screw it. I don't like this book. I don't like the series. I hated Sookie. I just didn't think she was a good character. And I dropped it. And then True Blood came out and a whole bunch of people were like, oh my god. And I was like, I know this series. And sure enough, it was based on that and it had changed names, which I don't really agree with, Be, but I'll get into that in a different review because uh, I am reading the whole series now, and my perception of the series has definitely changed a lot. But the first one just, I, when I reread it this year, I read it a couple weeks ago, and it just, it, it still makes me not like her. I just, it's not a great series, but I, I decided to stick it out and uh, see what all the fuss is about, because a lot of my friends on Goodreads, who I know in person, are all reading it, and I figure I tend to read a lot of stuff that other people don't read, so I should read stuff that I can actually talk to people about. So that's why I kind of started reading it, and I forced my way through the first couple books, and 
Now I like it. I still hate book one. I'm not too fond of books two through four either. Or even maybe five. Harvesting the Heart by Jodi Bacolt. It's about a woman who her mother left when she was six and she never heard from her again and she meets this guy and they fall in love and she ends up pregnant and they've only been dating a, like four months and he proposes to her and they get married and she has his baby and she just can't deal with being a mother when she doesn't know how to be a mom and uh, it brings up a lot of her abandonment issues and she ends up leaving her kid. The, um, the book goes back and forth between the husband and the wife. So basically, I don't like this book, not because it's not well written. Jodi Picoult's actually one of my favorite authors. I really, really love her and I own several of her books. But this one is just, it's not great. I don't remember when it came out, but I read it earlier this year, and there's some huge issues with it. The The plot resolve didn't, it, it's forced, I mean it makes sense, it, it could definitely happen in real life, but it's still forced, and I don't think it dealt with issues as well as her later books do, because this was definitely one of her earlier works. And um, there's not really much to say about it. I don't take issue with how it was written. There's some lines in it that I really loved. I just take issue with the story in general. And because with her books, you have to look at this is real life. This is real people. And even though it's fiction. And this is just not one of her better works. These people are not good people. They refuse to kind of see the other side. And... I feel like if they were a couple in real life, what happened would have destroyed them and it just didn't, wasn't good. Definitely not one of her better works. I definitely recommend her. This just was one that I'd say stay away or go in with some caution. A Feast for Crows and the Dance of Dragons by George R. R. Martin. The reason why these books are grouped together is because at the end of book three, he wrote book four and realized that it was so long he had to divide it into two books. So book four and book five actually start at the same point. So they're running parallel to each other, which is the first time in the series that he's done this. And so book four is short and it's the secondary characters. And book five is the main characters, the ones that you're like, okay, what happened? Um, and what's cool about book four was seeing Sam. Sam had some really cool character development, and he's one of my favorite characters on the show, and I, I definitely really love him. I don't like how book three set up something really amazing, and then all you heard were whispers of it through the books. That's definitely something that I really hated about these two, but my main thing is, and I'm trying to keep this seriously spoiler-free, but he puts Daenerys into a situation, and Daenerys is my hands-down favorite character. But the problem is that he wrote Daenerys into a corner. Her stuff went from being really like, oh my god, awesome, to, okay, can this be over? And there's definitely some really cool story in there. Um, and you learn more about who's not with the Lannisters, and that's really cool. Arya, her story, holy crap, it's amazing. Sansa has some really creepy stuff happening to her. Um, you get a lot of insight into the Lannister family. And it was really fun because you can, there's a lot to take away from that and a lot to talk about. But overall, books four and five just, they're, you have to read them because they're part of a series, but they're not anywhere near as good. The number one slot on my worst list is books 17, 18, and 19 of the Anita Blake series. They just were terrible. I... I read book 17 entering into 2012. I was actually trying to finish it in 2011 and it didn't work. And it was sex. Like there's just so little plot and I can't, I don't have a problem with sex in my books. I don't really look for that. I'm not big on reading porn, but that's what this is. It's porn. Book 18, which is um, Flirt, is Hamilton gives you 
this idea that there might be more story and it's just not at all and then you go into book 19 and before I read book 19 I looked on Goodreads and the reviews were just they were awful like a lot of people were like that's it I'm done and I read it and I went into it knowing a couple spoilers but not sure when they happened in the book and it just was horrible like it was just it was all this sex and all this and it's not even the sex it's the fact that she's been having sex since like book five or six and she just has this catholic guilt about it that i'm just done with like i was raised catholic and i can get where you're coming from but like i have friends in the in some of the lifestyles similar to what she's doing and I just don't see what the big deal is at this point like this is your life and you're okay with it and, and she spends most of the books just doing things because she has to and constantly feeling guilty and I don't read books for a guilt trip. Like, there's no story to back it up. There's never a resolution to her guilt. And so it's just, overall, I'm done. The first four books were amazing. They were really great books. I loved them a lot. And then from book five on, it just devolved. And it's not a fun series. And I don't recommend it ever to anyone. Honorable mentions for the worst books I've read in 2012. My kind of... Yeah, books are uh, Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding, um, which I'm doing for book first movie, so I'm not saying anything here. I just wanted to put it on the list, but you will see my review of that coming in January. Uh, Perfect Match by Jodi Picoult, which is about a woman who's a prosecutor and she prosecutes child molestation cases and then her six-year-old son is molested and she kills the guy that she thinks is responsible for it that she thinks her son has said is responsible and it turns out it's the wrong guy um it's about dealing with the consequences of your actions when you do such an emotional thing such as killing another person to protect your child and should you and how do you deal with this and it raised interesting questions but again just like the other Jodi Picoult book on this list the main focus of the book is not likable and I think that that really hurts your story in her case. I think that the main characters have to be likable or at least relatable and it doesn't really happen here. And the last one is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. I hate to admit this, it's really kind of embarrassing, but I haven't read Vonnegut. But I read Cat's Cradle, and there's definitely some fun stuff in there, but overall, it's not a great book. It's a fun read, but I don't really recommend it as highly as I would recommend other books that are classic, like Catch-22 or uh, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow, if you want to get a little more contemporary, um, or Perks of Being a Wallflower. Those are all books that I would recommend that are literary and very much literature and um so I wouldn't really recommend this but it showed me that he's a good writer I'm definitely looking forward to reading more of his works and I bought a lot of his books off kindle when they were on sale so um you'll see me read more I promise and you'll see some reviews on those when I read them so so that's my list I hope you enjoyed it I We'll be back a little while later with my best books of 2012, and uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Everyone who doesn't celebrate Christmas, happy day off. <laughs> I know I'm appreciating it. Okay, bye everyone. Don't forget to support your local library, and if you want, follow me on Goodreads. I welcome the friends and book recommendations.